my traumatic childhood experience with betta fish has taught me anything, is that some things definitely need to be separated. But just so often, things are needlessly separated, such as the relationship between chords and scales, which are often practiced separate from each other, but truly are calling out for each other's embrace, right? So today we're gonna to take the people's key, the key of G, and a simple E minor pentatonic shape, and kind of put them together to kind of see the relationship that they hold together, right? So uh, first of all, if you don't know the E minor pentatonic scale, it's really easy. Uh, the first note on each string is gonna be open, and it's gonna go open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three. Okay, so that is the relative minor in the key of G. So if you have all the chords that go in the key of G, you can actually practice that scale on top of in conjunction with those chords. So a really cool thing to do is play a chord scale in the key of G, which would just be the, the six or seven main chords in the key, which would be G major, the one chord, A minor, the two chord, B minor, the three chord, C major, the four chord, D major, the five chord, E minor, the sixth chord, the relative minor, and then F sharp uh, diminish the seventh chord. Now, if you don't know how to get those chords, I will link you to another video to kind of uh, tell you how to use the major scale to find all the chords in the key. But basically, those are gonna be the chords we're working with. And now we're gonna start taking part of that E minor pentatonic and combining with those chords, right? And specifically, we're, gonna, we're just gonna focus on two strings of the E minor pentatonic, right? So remember, we said we had a we're just gonna focus on the D and G string, which is open two, open two. Now, if you just kind of like have this little spot, this little four note spot, kind of be like a hot zone in your mind, think of how you can inflect or manipulate any single one of those seven chords with an open note and uh, a second fret, and just there, right? So we're gonna start with a G chord. And basically the whole thing we're gonna get to is gonna be uh, something that kind of sounds like this. So we're just kind of making these little inflections with these four notes. And anything you can do, you can add those notes to any of those chords that we just mentioned, right? So if we just take the one chord, a G chord. Now right now, I've got the oh, I've got three E, two A, open D, open G, open B, and three on the high E string, right? So the D, G, and B string are all open. And as we said before, the D and G string, we can go open or two to combine that minor pentatonic, the pentatonic scale, with the, the notes in this key, right? So all we have to do is kind of take your pointer finger and think of it as like a free agent and kind of like hit that D string open to it. I'm doing a hammer on, so I'm doing one pick and hammering on. So a G chord and then back. I'm just kind of switching back and forth. And the beautiful thing about the key of G is that since the open string Every open string is in the key, which you can do the same thing in like key of C. Uh, the beauty of it is you can actually abandon pieces of open chords and it'll still sound fine. Like if you play a G chord without your pointer finger, you just end up with that, which is fine. It's like a suspended type, uh, type feel, right? So basically we're gonna inflect this chord with just some simple hammer-ons pull-offs, just those four notes, however you want to do it. You can get creative, and there's still, even though there's only four notes, there's a lot that you can do with it, right? So we're gonna jump right to the four chord G, or uh, of G, which is C. And then we're gonna jump to uh, the two chord, A minor. And then back to G, right? So we have a one, four, two, one progression. And besides just kind of like combining uh, a pentatonic scale and a chord scale or just chords, what you're also doing when you kind of focus in on just part of a scale is you're really training your ear melodically to kind of like hear different melodies. So if the melody is just really something we're just kind of like hammering and pulling off on just those four notes, you'll see how that melody fits over different chords. And you can kind of see how a chord progression is moving, but a melody is kind of staying in the same spot. So that's kind of like the value of like ear training and just picking out little pieces of scales, however you want to think of it, right? So the G. To the C. We 
go to the five chord, a D. We could even do like something more like extended, like a D7. So every time I kind of change that, like this, like if I take this D and my pointer finger leaves the G string, goes up a string, that's technically making a different chord, but we don't have to think about it as being different chords. We can just think of altering existing chords that you might be more familiar with. So that's one of the beautiful things about the key of G is that the, the way it works out, the open strings and the relative minor pentatonic just kind of work out that you can always kind of abandon a string and let like the open string do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, kind of freeing up a lot of your fingers to kind of, kind of do a lot of those inflections and stuff like that too, right? So it's just kind of something to, to think about when you're practicing. Like, do I want to practice my chords or do I want to practice my scales? Do I want to be a lead player? Do I want to be a rhythm player? It's kind of, I think it's kind of dumb that we separate those things when really it's all just playing guitar, playing an instrument. It's, uh, it's stuff that any player should know. Like if you just have aspirations to just be a rhythm player, these are still things that you can incorporate and it's still scales. Like, you know, the adage that like rhythm players should practice their scales and lead player or lead players should practice their scales and rhythm players need to know all their chords and stuff like that. I think it's kind of dumb, you know, it just kind of pigeonholes people into like a certain way of thinking. Whereas really it's just kind of learning the instrument, knowing uh, where the where the pieces kind of fit together. And I think the minor pentatonic is something that a lot of people already, already know. A lot of these chords are something you already know too. So really you can use these examples. You can pick up your own chords. You can put a capo and just kind of like play it the key of G chords all around the neck to kind of play any song and to start incorporating some of these little pieces. You don't have to stop with just the D and the G string. You can do, maybe let's do like the bottom two strings instead. And then if you make like a facial expression, like you're thinking really hard, it kind of seems like you're like really like. like you really know what you're doing but you're just kind of randomly adding and subtracting minor pen pentatonic notes. I have such a hard time saying pentatonic more than like four times in the span of a 10 minute video. Anyways, that's basically it. Any questions you have, hit me up on uh, Twitter, Instagram, the website, or the comments, and I will see you soon. Thanks a lot.